It's the eve of India's 76th birthday. 75 years ago, at midnight, India made a tryst with destiny. An independent India was born. It was drained, divided, but desperate to make it on its own. How has the journey been so far? Tonight, we look at India's achievements at 75, the success stories at 75. Hello and welcome to Gravitas Plus. I'm Palki Sharma Upadhyay. There's so much to talk about. It's been a stupendous journey of 75 years. We decided to start with the economy. The British Crown looted $45 trillion from India. From raw materials to the Kohinoor diamond, the British took all. They also exploited all. The thumbs of Indian weavers were cut off. Indian peasants were crushed. The brightest jewel in the British Crown was left with the prospect of a dim future. Britain de-industrialized India. At the time of independence, India's per capita income was 230 rupees. That's 2.89 dollars. The average income was one fifteenth of what an average American earned. There was poverty, hunger. The task before India was to lift itself and it did. There was rapid industrialization, three successful revolutions, green, white and blue. India opened itself to the world, globalized its economy, privatized its banks. 75 years later, India is one of the world's leading economies. From less than $3, India's per capita income has grown to almost 2000 Its share in the world GDP is 3.28%. Seven decades back, India was an import-dependent country. Today, more and more global companies are making in India, and Indian companies are making a mark globally. India is becoming a force to reckon with in more ways than one. Which brings us to geopolitics. India successfully navigated the Cold War. It became a political force for decolonization. India liberated Bangladesh. It reached out to Africa, successfully dehyphenated Israel and Palestine, stuck strategic partnerships with the Gulf. India isolated Pakistan. When India and Pakistan had a dogfight, the world supported India. When Pakistan tried to make an issue out of Kashmir, the world again supported India. Today, world powers see India as an important partner, a leading voice in multilateral forums, the face of peace, the loudest cheerleader of counter-terrorism. Of course, the journey has not been easy. Right after independence, India made some bad decisions, like letting go of a Security Council seat. Then there were security challenges. 1948, Pakistan's incursion into Kashmir. 1962, the war with China. 1999, the war in Kargil the current standoff in Ladakh. But on every such occasion, India showed the world that it's capable of defending itself, capable of resisting any attempt to redraw its map. India has taught the world tolerance, universal acceptance, and none of it was easy. You may recognize this man, Winston Churchill, Britain's former prime minister. Churchill had dismissed India's experiment with self-governance. Why? Because India is socially diverse. 22 languages, 20,000 dialects, numerous religions, numerous regions. Churchill said, India is merely a geographical expression. It is no more a single country than the equator. He was convinced that independent India won't be able to stay together. Well, Churchill was wrong. India remains united and grows stronger. Its success as a secular state has surprised many. Of course, there have been ups and downs. India survived a partition. The Babri Masjid demolition, Operation Blue Star, it's what followed the Gujarat riots. But which country does not have rough patches and which country can claim to be this diverse? In the initial years post-independence, it was tough keeping the country together. One of the big challenges was public health or the lack of it. In 1947, the average life expectancy in India was 32 years. There was rampant spread of communicable diseases like malaria and tuberculosis. In 1947, India registered 75 million cases of malaria. Its total population was 330 million. So almost 23% of the population had malaria. By 1964, the numbers came down. Then there was polio. Until early 1990s, Every day, around 500 children were getting paralyzed. India fought polio and declared itself polio-free by 2014. Today, India's polio eradication is a case study of healthcare success for the world. India also eradicated smallpox. And as we speak, India is running the world's largest vaccination program. India's healthcare system is one of its biggest achievements. We hardly appreciate it because there's a lot that's not right. But when you look at where we started, the achievements look astounding. Around the time of independence, 2,000 mothers died for every 1 lakh childbirths. 2,000. Today, that number is down to 103. 
Also look at the increase in life expectancy. It's over 100%. This is one of the most important indicators of human development. Today, India is called the world's pharmacy. It exports medicines to 200 countries and regions. Another feather in the cap is technology. India decided to go to space just 17 years after independence. It set up INCOSPAR, or Indian National Committee for Space Research. India's first rocket launch happened in 1963 from a town called Thumba. The rocket parts were transported on bicycles and bullock carts. Look at this photo. This is how India's space journey began. Today, India is a well-established space power. It has reached Mars. Today, India is unfurling the tricolor in space to mark 75 years of independence. Do you know India was also the first country outside the permanent UNSC members to test a nuclear bomb? And it did this despite the world's best efforts. Reports say the CIA killed an Indian scientist to roadblock the nuclear journey. The US had even deployed a satellite over India to spy. So work on the nuclear test was mostly done during the night and equipment would be returned to the original place in the morning to evade detection by American satellites. Code names were used. The thermonuclear device, for example, was placed in a shaft named White House. On the 18th of May 1974, India took the world by surprise. It became a nuclear power. The operation was called Smiling Buddha. The director of India's Nuclear Research Institute, Raja Ramana, told the then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi, Buddha has smiled. How did India achieve all of this? One, democracy. Two, literacy. From the very first day of independence, every adult in India had the right to vote. And just for reference, it took the US 150 years of independence to adopt universal adult franchise. In the last 75 years, India's population has grown from 370 million to 1.4 billion. States have been reorganized, but the sanctity of elections has never been compromised. They're chaotic, yes, they're controversial, but they're held without fail every five years. Voters queue up in front of booths, some cast their vote, some vote their caste, but all of them exercise their right. And there have been dark periods. Like the emergency in 1975, then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi was facing protests. Her future in office was uncertain, so she declared a 22-month-long emergency. Democratic institutions were attacked, politicians were locked up, the press was censored. But it did not last. And that's the thing about India's story. It's far from perfect. There's corruption, there's inefficiency in everything else that we keep complaining about. Yet, India's democracy has delivered. It has alleviated poverty built world-class infrastructure and sent Indians to space to win gold medals and beauty pageants and to lead the world's biggest companies. Literacy has played an important role here. When India became independent, four out of five people could not read. The literacy rate was around 12%. For India to grow, it had to educate its people. It made free education a fundamental right. Schemes like Sarva Shiksha Abhiyan and Midday Meal ensured that children found their way to schools. India expanded its educational infrastructure. In 1947, India had only 28 medical schools, 4 dental colleges and 33 engineering colleges. Look at the numbers today. The India that could neither read nor write is now the world's biggest talent pool. Top engineers, doctors, Indian origin CEOs all bear testimony to India's growth and transformation. Today's India is home to 1.4 billion people. It is progressive, yet rooted in its culture and values. It is home to the world's youngest population, the world's largest democracy, the world's largest film industry, the world's largest diaspora population, the second largest road network, a leader in climate action, a market that every company wants to enter and a strategic force that every government wants to partner. Today, as India celebrates its historical achievements, it also has a clear vision of the future. This is India at 75.